still getting used to wearing this earpiece. Um, this week, a friend of mine, Gary Shogren, posted on his uh, Facebook page a really interesting quote. He, he's a part of a forum, and someone who doesn't know Jesus posted this statement. What is with you, 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 you Christians? You think, do you really think that, that you can just approach the God of the universe with, without any fear, without any back or call, and wander in, and he will actually pay attention, you care about you, and want to listen to every little thing? Yeah, pretty much so. It was Gary's response. Is it your response? verse in Hebrews talks about how that um, you and I, Hebrews 4.16, we have this un amazing access where we can walk into the throne, up, up before the throne of grace, and pour our hearts out, and he will listen. Do, the challenge this morning is, are you participating in the benefits? Do you really believe God? When uh, Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, he spent an amazing amount of time trying to console his disciples so that they would get the point. John 14, Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, give you another helper to be with you forever. For even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot conceive because it, it neither sees him or knows him, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. The point I want to stress this morning is this intimacy. The disciples had this intimate relationship with Jesus. He was their friend. They broke bread together. They hung out together. They did stuff together. They, they battled. They saw the miracles that he performed. They were up close and personal. Where it wasn't, it wasn't just the big crowds and they were there and the oohs and the ahs and the, and, the, and the thunder and the lightning. It was after that they would steal away together and he would sit around a fire pit and just talk with them and explain to them what was going on. And he knew as God, that they thrived on that relationship. So he told them, wait for the comfort of the whole sentence. The Holy Spirit's a person. It's not an it. It's not in this inanimate object. He's in you, he's upon you, and he's all around you. We have the scriptures because God breathed through the Holy Spirit, moved and carried men along to pen the words. So the first challenge this morning, have you considered all that you all have access? Think about that for a second. Have you considered that you have an all-access backstage pass to the King of Glory? Through the Holy Spirit, we have this pass to everything God has for us. Because of your relationship with God, the Holy Spirit gives you special treatment, as he does. Why don't you think about your own life for a second? Have you ever gotten the backstage pass? Have you ever gotten all access to an event or something that just blew you away? That you're just, you know? I, I've had so many that it was just hard for me to pick from. Um, I'll share the music one because I think more people can identify with that. I have a White House one, but you know, eh, you know. I don't want to get into politics. Um, my wife and I at one time published a magazine called Jam. It was by teens, for teens. It was 
a really cool project. We did a lot of interviews, and along the way, we did an interview with a little band called Guardian. Anybody remember Guardian from back in the day? <laughs> yeah! Well, I was I got to be friends with bass player, the bass player Jim. You know, when you would talk to him in person, it was like the the dude played loud rock way too long, and he couldn't hear anymore. You know? Why? Yes, exactly. <laughs> but Jimmy. Jimmy invited me up to a, to a gig where he was doing this fundraiser for, I can't, you know, I've been through so many fundraisers from Haiti to this hurricane to that hurricane. You lose track of how many times you've asked for shekels, you know? Anyway, he invited us up. He said, you know, I, 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 I've got these two bands coming, but I really need a, a, a local worship, praise and worship band to open the event. Do you know any? I'm going, yeah, I've got these guys, Fourth Man Furnace. Uh, let me invite them and we'll, we'll come up. Well, not knowing at the time that Matt, who was our worship leader, who was the leader of Fourth Man Furnace, had a deep childhood man crush, if I could call it that, on John Schlitt. You, met, you mentioned John Schlitt, and Matt would just go, <laughs> he would just fall apart. He just, just, it was his guy, you know, his, his music, you know. So John was at the, at the concert. And we're all sitting backstage, it was an open air concert, and, and more, the band in between Fourth Band and John was a band called The Apologetics. Anybody know The Apologetics? I love The Apologetics because they do parody music, okay? So I'm sitting with John, I'm sitting with my buddy Jim, and Apologetics are on the stage, and they get to their Noah song, and they're inviting kids to come up and sing with them on stage, and my two little girls are sitting there, and they schlep out to the stage. And they join one of the band members. Mary goes to the far, far side as normal. She goes as far as she can. Sarah just migrates to the first microphone. You know? And uh, so they're playing, they're doing the song, and John leans over to him. He goes, what do you think of the band? I said, I love them. I've listened to them for quite a number of years now. And he goes, which one's yours? I said, the little blonde. And the other little brunette over there on the other side, he goes, do you know who the blonde's singing with? Going, bass player. He goes, no, it's not their regular bass player. He's sick. I said, well, who is it? He goes, it's the bass player for Duran Duran. He got saved last week. And uh, this is his first Christian gig. And just to let you know that your little girl's getting the pleasure of singing with a guy from Duran Duran. And I'm saying, and I'm saying this is this backstage thing. You know, you feel like, whoa, God's doing something really cool here. You know? The thing that we need to realize We have that kind of access that wows us on a moment-by-moment -moment basis with the Holy Spirit. He loves you that much. He cares about you. He's involved intimately in your daily life. Whether you believe it or not, he's there. And there's some things that go on. You have access, as we saw in Hebrews. 4, 16. But you also have this thing that you need to understand that you've been adopted. You're a kid. You don't just don't want, have the opportunity to wander in with your family. Do you know in the phrase in Galatians it says this, now I say as long as an heir is a child he does not differ from at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. But he is under, the, under guardians and managers until the day set by his father. So we are also, we were children. We were held in bondage and under the elemental things of this world. But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, at which might receive adoption of sons. We sang the song that we our Redeemer. Beautiful thing. But you realize how powerful adoption is. State of Pennsylvania, when you adopt a child, that child has more rights than your own natural children. Do you know that? Do you know when you adopt a child that you can never disown them by law? Do you know when the Bible talks about adop adoption, they're talking about a weld that has been 
the one place a weld will never, one place it will never break is the weld itself if it's done right. You know, where these two become one, where that strip is laid down and it's hardened. That's the relationship you have with Christ, emphasized and brought about and ministered to your heart through the Holy Spirit, that you become sons and daughters of the King. You see, the Holy Spirit confirms. When I went into ministry, well, I tried not going into ministry for a decade. And about the seventh or eighth time that you're in a church service and the pastor looks down from the pulpit and there's seven or eight different pastors, mind you, and they look at you sitting there three rows back and they go, you down there. God's got a call on your life. Sooner or later, you start saying, he's got a call on my life. I couldn't escape the conviction that he had on my heart because he had something he wanted me to do. But you see, it goes beyond that. You know, I'm a creative, which means I'm susceptible to being out on a ledge and having a writer's block moment where I feel like it's the world has come to an end. Anybody who's a creative has moments like that. Being a pastor of a creative church, there's at least somebody every week sitting on a ledge somewhere wondering about, am I going to end it this week? Because I've reached the end of myself. It is just a natural thing of creatives because we get drained. The Holy Spirit, if you're living a properly balanced life and you're allowing yourself the access that you have, if you realize that the benefits that you have as an adopted child, that the simple matter of the fact, He is going to convict you of right and wrong. He's going to convict you of the sin in your life. He's going to speak to you about what is wrong. But He's also going to speak confirmation of what you've been called to be and to do. You can't escape that. Trust me, I had reached the point in my Christian life where I said, I've had it. Bugger, I'm going fishing. Serious as a heart attack. I spent about three years on well, Sunday morning. I'd go to Wawa, I'd get my paper. I would get at least two papers. I'd get the News Journal, I'd get the Philadelphia Inquirer. I'd get my large coffee, I'd get my lawn chair, and I would go to a park. And I would sit there and read my paper and drink my coffee because I had it with Christianity. It's to hear Here's the thing. God follows you. Do you know how many times I got, I call it spiritually, spiritually assaulted in a park by some well-meaning Christian who treated me like a lost person and gave me a track because I had nothing better to do to be in a park on a Sunday morning? Holy Spirit wouldn't let me get away. He'd speak, somebody would come and just talk. It was... That's what he does. Not only before leading you to Christ, because I had those experiences too, but he also does it when you are a believer because he's not going, he wants the best for you. He knows the plans they have for you. They, Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They're three but one. They, we as hair so beautifully put it the other day in, in Genesis, they had a conversation about us, you know, God's got a miraculous plan for each and every one of us. And it's the Holy Spirit that is going to convict our hearts. He's going to guide us. He's going to lead us. He's going to move us along. As Christians, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We are to become increasingly aware of the Spirit's guidance of our lives and to initiate new steps of faith which we leave room for God to work. We are guided by the Spirit because we are children of God. It's Romans 9.14. We learn to surrender daily to the Spirit's guidance and He makes us more and more like God we love. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. I'm going to close with three points that relate to this. And I want you to get this. I want you to be able to walk away knowing you have access, knowing you have been redeemed and adopted, and knowing what 
his work is about in your life. He assures you. Gives you absolute assurance. I am okay, I know I'm weird. That's been that's been decided upon a long time ago. Um, but maybe maybe you can identify with this. You wake up in the morning and there's a song going on in your heart. And you're in the third verse. Which means somebody was singing over you. Anybody ever experienced that? Where you wake up and there's a verse and there's a song going on. It's his presence to assure you. A buddy of mine back at seminary used to say it this way, Daddy, take care of you. You've been adopted, and the God of heaven on the God on, the God of heaven and earth, the God who overcame death, the God who created everything, is there to assure you that you're his. That you have him, that you possess him, that you possess life eternal, that you that you have been forgiven of everything. See, he does his work outwardly and then inwardly. And First John five thirteen says, "By he also is indwelling us." The Holy Spirit comes into your life, and he comes into your heart. When I was a, a, a lost person. I was in college, and I denied God, and I, I said, prove it to me and just shut up or just go away, you know, and God spent the next six months proving that he was real, and he did. One of the things about my pre-salvation days is that I was a very gifted, talented musician. I was a talented individual. I had hundreds of friends, but I could be in a room of 300 people who all know and love me and totally feel naked and empty inside. When I became a Christian, when I invited Christ in my heart, he came into my heart, and he filled that stony chamber of my heart. And he has spent many hours, many waking hours, assuring me that I was his. Second thing, he teaches us. Who do you think is your schoolmaster? Who do you think is giving you the homework assignments? Who do you think is speaking into your life and teaching you? Ah, we have a teachable moment. Let's talk some. You ever have one of those with God? Come on now. Don't be shy. Have you had one of those with God? If you have one of those with God, I will pray for you, and I will assure you that God will have a moment with you like that because it does work that way. He teaches us. He instructs us. He brings us along. He shows us what is right. He moves around us. Listen, when we began this church, we began this church by prayer walking. We prayer walked this neighborhood. We prayer walked the three campuses near us. We prayer walked downtown Swarthmore. We prayer walked. We just prayed, God, move in. God, fall upon this community. God, open doors. Give us favor. And let me tell you something. When you have an attitude of that kind of a prayer in your life, he will teach you and show you stuff that will boggle your mind. He will show you the needs. He will show you the problems. He will show you the hurts. He will show you his solutions. So he assures us. He teaches us. And this is the one I love. And if you get this, man, I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. He fortifies you. This week, I'm moving to a new cane in physical therapy. I'm going to a symbol post. God help me. I'm scared. I haven't fell down yet. I fell down in the hospital a couple of times. And let me tell you something, a large man built like a defensive tackle. Falling down, the fall is not the problem, it's the bounce. Or the skid marks that you, when you don't bounce. Um, the thing that I've learned about having cancer and recovering got my shirt finally it's 
speaking out boldly as I go back to my oncologist this week for my one year follow up. I'm learning to live with limitations. I take naps now. I need naps. Without naps, I don't live. I don't have the, I, there's things I just don't have anymore. And here's the thing that I have found, the, the verse that talks about through our weaknesses we are made strong. Let me tell you something. You all have brokenness. You all have limitations. You all have things that I want to do, but you know you can't. The Spirit of God's job in John, 1 John 4 talks about the fact that His indwelling is greater than anything of external that will come upon us. He is there to fortify us, to build us up, to encourage us, to support us, to show us that, hey, I got this. Live long enough and you get broken enough physically, you will understand that moment when you realize that God has just said to you, sit down, I got this. Your flesh is weak. We must allow the Spirit of God to have His way with us. Too many of you fight the Spirit of God on a regular basis. You're stubborn, you're bullheaded, you're thick, you're foolish. You think you, you think you know it all, speaking to young people in particularly, even though I know so old people that way. When you give God everything, when you allow God to bring you into his chamber, bring you in for full access, where he assures you, teaches you, and fortifies you. Your life will never be the same again. Good morning. He will never stop until you get there. The one thing I want you to walk away from this Holy Spirit series is I want us to get beyond talking about Him in the third person. I want you to get to this place where you realize that He's alive, that He's real, He's your best friend, and you have this intimate relationship with Him where you count on Him and rely on Him on a daily basis. And he's building you up for something special. Amen. So I did bless. Father, there's so much we have to gain. There's so much we need to learn. Lord, we are just pathetic sometimes. We keep repeating the same broken cycle. And we don't allow you to have the access that you provided for us. But Lord, it's a two-way street. That it, we, you will allow us in, but we must allow you in. I pray that you have your way with us this week. To teach us, to strengthen us, to assure us, to mold and shape us into these vessels of honor you desire for us to be. I also pray this morning if there be one who's struggling in their heart of not knowing you, and they're fighting you, Lord, give in to the Spirit of God who's wooing you, who's calling you by name. Father, move upon us this week. Change us to your honor and glory in Christ's name. Amen.